Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Siberian Black Army Lover. Right now, it is February 3rd, 1963, in which we're doing the Foundation Lane. An experiment in anarchism that many thought was not possible. We have proven time and time again that ours is a superior ideology. Without compromising our morals, we have managed to create an economic system that benefits all, and not just a, a privileged few who happen to control the means of production. We completed laying the economic foundation of a nation of and for all Russian peoples, but the gray area. In a perfect world, the anarchist society would come about naturally as a popular reaction to the corrupt and unjust states that ruled over them. States that favored the wealthy and affluent more above all else. As things stand, however, it would seem that the peoples are more attached to their states than originally anticipated, and many of those states take issue with their existence. The communes separately cannot repel an invasion from these powers, and thus a centralized military is necessary if we are to survive. But is such an apparatus not contradictory to the fundamentals of anarchism? Furthermore, the central council that presides over all the communes, regardless of how democratic it is, not also opposed to the ideals of anarchism? How far can we stray from our roots before betraying our ideological core? We should encourage these discussions and plot out exactly what rights should be allowed to the communes and individuals as opposed to the central government. And I want to read one more as well. The Black Army, why not? The Black Army stands as the guardians of the revolution and freedom here, and will be instrumental in liberating Siberia from the grasp of tyrants and dictators. The Siberian War took a heavy toll on our armed forces, and in many ways still reeling from the effects of the war, that war, on our military. Even in terms of just equipment and manpower, two areas in which we have normally done well compared to our neighbors, we have had a significant ways to recover. We should take stock of the Army's current situation and take note of the areas that we have to improve in. But the economists trouble thoughts. Killed Chichikov, fought with his steak, ripping at the chewy, undercooked meat. The bread rolls fared a little better, nearly dislodging one of his teeth with the stiffness of the roll. The vegetables, well, vegetables may have been the worst. They had been cooked to perfection, but his wife's vegetables of choice was, of course, onions. He had, he was, of course, deathly allergic to them. Yet Katarina looked at him with a look of disappointment. You've barely touched your food, Mikhail. Well, it certainly touched me and beaten me and nearly taken all my life and teeth. Uh, killed Chichikov, remarked, leaning back into his chair in defeat. Yekaterina. Yekaterina. Set her fork down and dabbed at her lip with a napkin. I thought it was delicious. The room was silent, of course. It was for a different... It was time for a different line of questioning. How was your day today? It was easy to get her husband to talk about himself. If all else failed, she could always rely on that. Killed Chichikov. Stared off into space for some time, despite the simple question. His wife simply sat and observed him. You were there, right? You meant Bukharin when he came to Novosibirsk, right? Killed Chichikov was already... Who already knew the answer to that? A photograph of the three of them was sitting in the foyer. Of course, his wife laughed. I don't know how you could have missed the man. He was larger than life. Mikhail nodded for a while, letting his partner's words echo. Do you remember the things they said about him, even then? Yekaterina was struck by the same sun that had taken her husband. Uh, I suppose I do. They never really had a pleasant opinion of him here, did they? Mikhail's hand suddenly shot out and grabbed his wife's, prompting a gasp from her. He stared deep into her eyes. What will they say about me, Cat? When I am dead and my economic policies have run the course, will they curse my name as we do his? The rest of dinner was, of course, quite silent. But a couple comments to go through. Um, actually, this is not where we left off last time. Uh, as some of you guys did say, this one person did say in the comments that I was screwing up a little bit because I left out the production unit thing. I didn't realize that we needed more grid power. Uh, we're producing eight. Really, we can have up to twelve. So we need about four more grid power. So thank you very much. Um. Uh, for letting me know that I screwed up. Um, I usually try to read all your comments, so thank you very much for letting me know. I actually replayed this entire campaign, which wasn't very long, but um, just so that we can actually be in a little better position. Um, other than that, we will continue doing the one that gives us... Actually, right now, we're doing some of the concession stuff. Oh, look at this. We're all green here for now as well. Uh, we're trying to raid more people. We are trying to get the power plant so we get a thermoelectric plant so that we can... Where is it? Right here. No, right here. Get six more energy, which would be great grid power, so we can really actually use a production unit. So thank you for reminding me about that. I forgot about that. Also, when I replayed this, uh, we were in a fiscal crisis. Um, so, yeah, you don't want your debt-to-GDP ratio to go too high. Our current cap is 100%, uh, or 110% right now, which is not too bad, but we got to keep that debt low, unfortunately. So I have lowered armor spending, army spending, and city spending means nothing. But our real GDP growth is not bad right now, so it's pretty good. And, ooh. People's Revolutionary Council. We did try these guys yesterday. Um, does anyone else have loot? Chris Norris has none, none. Tom's has none. You know what? We'll, we'll try it. Why not? Screw it. If it goes poorly, it just might. So, other comments include: We should stay anarchists. Someone wants me to choose a focuses that improve the economy and army and revolutionary diplomacy and have a slight balance between despotism as well as socialism. But a lot of you guys said go straight socialist. So. I think for this campaign, because I played this one before, I did do lib Libsoc or Libertarian Socialist last time. I think I'm going to try to go as s communist as possible. Bro, I literally just left that area. Bro, seriously. You couldn't ask for this earlier, Krasnoyarsk? 
So we'll do this this raid. We'll get our guys back on the line, defend, do well, you know, the normal stuff. Um, but yeah, I think if you guys want to, we can go straight, straight Kami, the gray area, of course, followed up with the Black Army. Cognitive dissonance. This better be good, Stefan. Uh, Stefana shivered, holding herself tightly to trap any heat that may escape. Yeah, Anton said, good enough to justify waking up the entire village to discuss. Stefan, a frail, pale man, led them deeper and deeper into the woods outside of their community. A pack of 50 people followed closely behind him, not too closely. No, 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 no. No one ever got that close to Stefan. In their defense, it wasn't their fault that he would stay locked inside the top floor of his family's residence, tucked away alone like a discarded toy, only the building's library to keep him company. Stefan rose a hand, freezing in place. Here, we'll do it here. We'll do what here, Svetlana asked, her being unfortunate enough to be closest to the man. Without a word, Stefan blew out his candle, plunging the forest into darkness. The people sang a chorus of protest and confusion, but it was not long lived. The forest erupted in light once more, and the scene before him was plain to see. Stefan had taken an old gun and stored it away in his coat. Now it was pressed against his temple, his finger hovering over the trigger. The crowd deep drew a deep breath of shock, and to muttering a prayer under his breath. I'm a traitor, I'm an enemy, I'm an operator for the state. I must be punished, I must be put on trial. Stefan lifted, shifted his weight in the snow. Svetlana watched with uh, wide eyes as a man rambled about the things he had read, how over time he had begun to su subscribe to the old ideas of Bukharin. He finished his ramblings with a request, shoot the man, kill the traitor. The village looked at each other for answers, dumbfounded by the situation before them. Shikashi stepped forward. Stefan, nobody wants you to die for that. You are free to believe what you like. Your beliefs make you who you are, and we'd be a lousy community to tell you to change. Svetlana took another step forward. Put down the gun, Stefan. Let's go home. Freedom extends to thoughts and actions. So, I want to do a mixed balance, but I think going pure anarcho-communist Sounds like a lot of fun. So, at its core, communism is an ideology whose whole purpose is to give the means of production back to the people. Giving a centralized government control of the economy is completely contradictory to this idea. In order to improve the efficiency of our economy, we should instead create an industrial council from several communes, which will create a list of possible industrial improvements and sites of investment, which will then be passed on to each commune's local council for consideration. The industrial council will then also be allocated a set amount of capital so that they might facilitate such industrial construction projects in underprivileged communities and communes. Should be strong enough, and boom, let's go. Happy March, everybody. Happy, happy March. Uh, someone also says, uh, they never mention father anarchy. So does that mean all anarchists are fatherless? I, I would agree so, yeah. Wait, we can do two raids. Can we actually do two raids? Let's win here first if we possibly can. If we can do two raids, that'd be really cool. Oh, Malaya. An isolated occurrence or a sign of something larger. Oh, boy. Come on, let's win, boys. Let's win. We got things to do and people to see and loot to take. Yeah, not bad. Prepare a raid against those guys, too. Let's win here first. Alright, so let's go and do this one, too. Nice. Enemy is defeated. Great. If we do both at once, that's actually really awesome. Now, hopefully we can win, but you never know. Also, uh, we... Because of all... You know, fucking disappears. I did go four and two. We have two down here. So we are making guns, anti-tank. I already converted one of our divisions to uh, one of the militia divisions to actual like our normal infantry division. So we had four. We had three militias, but I increased uh, one of the militias or converted one of the militias over to this infantry division, and I actually gave them an extra infantry battalion too. So not bad overall. Are they training? Black Army. Nothing without us. Oh, they paid the tribute. Look, and we got money too. Uh, liquid reserves by 400%. Nice. Do you smoke? I don't think I've ever asked. Stepanov lit the cigarette dangling in his mouth, took a few, few puffs, and shoved his hands back into his pockets. The old General Mishrenko kept his vision forward as a pair of uh, walked down the street towards the General Assembly. Not anymore, he grunted out. My last smoke was in Moscow before I boarded the train to that city, and my next one will be when I would take the train back here to my nation, to Moscow. Uh, we're gonna go with uh, echo term. Stepping out blue smoke into the air. You talk a lot about Germany and about Moscow. We're still here fighting for the anarchist movement in our own sliver of Russia. Why don't you ever talk about that? Mishrenko kept his pace, not turning to face Ivan. Are you accusing me of something, Comrade Stepanov? Ivan shrugged, running a hand through what little remained of his hair. Some would call it an accusation. I would be more inclined to call it hope. Hope? Hope that you see beyond all this talk of anarchy and freedom. Stepanov stopped in his tracks, making the general do the same. Hope that you would support me unconditionally. Mishrenko's face scrunched together in confusion, but quickly softened in realization. Mishrenko was a hero to the people, but to the Black Army he was a legend, an ideal, a man who never stopped fighting. Never being one for politics, he could still sense when he was being used as a pawn. Was he ready for that? Mishrenko quickly turned away from Ivan and resumed walking. Never tell anyone about this conversation. Roads for grain. Ooh. Collective defense requirements. That looks like a lot of fun. That's actually not bad. 
Uh, but we're going to go with roads for grain. Building roads between our communes will ensure increasingly important. Will become increasingly important. It will ensure prosperity and commerce between the communes. To that end, we will create a grain bank which will distribute extra grain to communes that build roads within and around the territory they control. This grain bank will be stocked voluntarily with grain provided by communes that have a surplus. In return, they will be compensated monetarily or with any raw materials or machinery with equal value to what they have provided. Many heads are better than one. The map of central Siberia reeked of mildew, the sides dotted with rips and tears, and the city names rendered illegible from the decades of exposure to the elements. Through it all, however, the double-headed eagle sat resplendent in the corner, its watchful gaze promising to prevent any harm to befall Russia. Although the eagle watched, very rarely did something uh, stare back until the fat face of Veniamin entered into its field of vision. How the F is this? Well, what is this? We are releasing maps from the Empire? He turned over to the rest of his peers, who were simply hunched over the yellowing map. It's all but it's reliable. I brought pens. The man reached into his bag and retrieved six pens. We can mark out the different communes from here. He uncapped his pen and immediately scribbled over the coat of arms of the House of Romanov, snuffing out the bird for good. I suppose we can go alphabetically. What's the status of Baris Katarina? Well, it's an idea. We've been hit hard by communists of the East ever so often. Some bitter old men will cross into our land and burn it all to the ground. The Black Army's promised an increased presence, but we've got nothing of the sort. The man nodded, drawing a skull and crossbones of the commune, diverting from Zelenogorsk, or Gorask. As a possibility, much of the industry there was left untouched. Thus became the pattern for three long hours. The young Russians drew signs and stripes, painting a picture of a land free, or freed land interwoven with arrows. Goods danced across the frozen tundra, springing from place to place as a hunt for the perfect balance escalated. The man finally set his pen down and admired the work. It was messy, but well put together. It was organized chaos, fitted for fitting for the free territory. Working together, there's nothing unachievable. And we're currently still doing roads for grain, but... Uh, uh, there was another comment, a couple of comments saying that they would also support me doing like despotists. Um, I, I think I want to go continue going anarcho communist for now. Uh, the next time I play is SBA, the Siberian Black Army. Please remind me, I will go full on, probably despotist. But for now, let's keep going. I would say lipsock, but more like just anarcho communist for now. So, incentivize qualified personnel. The Siberian Soviet had an increasingly difficult time acquiring qualified personnel in the important fields like mechanical or electronical engineering. This has been largely due to the absence of organized education across Russia post-collapse. The best way to go about alleviating the situation is to incentivize people to go into these professions by creating a mentor program for men and women going into these fields. A student will be able to learn the craft under a trained professional and get paid by the government while doing it. And right now we do have 14 grid power, which is pretty nice. Pretty darn nice, actually. Uh, we're all green here, which could be better, of course. Um, we're doing the promotion to promote black army discipline. We get a little bit more discipline support here, but we get some more army professionalism, which I think is quite all right for us. Quite all right. What do we have here? Implement worker concessions. We could do that. I just don't know how bad the workers' revolt will be, especially since a lot of this take has been taken out by uh, literally just nothing, anarchy. So, isolated villages, not bad. Cool. Um, following that one, <sighs> industrial investment still pretty good. I think I still want to get some external investments too. A black spring. All around us, the rains of April stop coming down. The trees are full and leaf. Fledgings are learning to fly, and the Rasputitsa is coming to an end. With it are going the muddy roads that swallow the entire military bridges or brigades, and then that destroys more Russian trucks and tanks than ever any military ever has. With summer right around the corner and the spring mud drying up, we are entering into a short period of time now, between now and autumn when the roads are clear and the weather's fair. We should take advantage of this time we have and begin preparing for war, as those around us certainly are. Onwards. Nice. Yeah, we just have to make sure the debt is not that high. We just... Uh... Not good. The real GDP growth is nice. We have 0 0.131 inflation, which is so good. I love that inflation amount. Okay, so... Oh, hello. Uh, revolutions of Ukraine and Catalonia were both defeated at the hands of expansionist authoritarians, seeing their prosperous commons as an undefended prize waiting to be taken. This will not be our fate. In a unanimous vote, the Security Council has enacted a motion allowing the Black Army to conduct offenses on the status of warlords of Central Siberia. Should these offenses succeed, the vast industry and population of the region would surely cement the Black Army's position as a force to be reckoned with. Final preparations. Uh, that's not bad. Leviathan. On Tomsk. Which wouldn't be bad. I kind of want to do Krasnoyarsk first. Svoboda. Uh, Goyalpol. Ooh, I do want to do these people. If we can do, like, Krasnoyarsk first and then do these guys, I think I'd like that one first just because we can. They're not worth very much, but Krasnoyarsk would be really nice to get first. So, Svoboda. The workers of Krasnoyarsk have been oppressed under the boot of an autocratic state for too long. We must free the workers of Krasnoyarsk from their oppressive false democracy. Nikolai Andreev and his military apparatus have continued their stranglehold over Krasnoyarsk for too long, and unlike us, whose militaries work towards the democratization and liberation of Russia, theirs has done nothing but to restrict workers' rights and strengthen government power. We march on Krasnoyarsk at dawn. Yes, we lose political power, we get more war support, that's fine. We're already pretty much poised to go into them anyway, so... Not bad. And we've got to keep a little bit of PP so we can core stuff immediately, but 
uh, says Village School. Education is a foremost way in which we can bring our communes out of the ancient ways of thinking and into the 20th century. We should give the uh, communes more resources for the development of their educational services, which they can use to build better schools and higher education centers. As part of the program, we will provide higher quality teachers for the cities to assess in training our new teachers over the course of the next few years. Additionally, we should endeavor to increase enrollment in schools and colleges so that our people might take advantage of these new resources available to them. Academic base will improve. We get a little bit more social support. What makes a teacher teach? Not the money. And we're so doing more discipline here, which is really nice. Reunification of Russia. Honestly, not bad. So right now, we have 14 power grid units, which is nice. We basically have enough to power everything, so... We're going to be using 14 of these units due to our power grid, pretty much. So we're doing, I think, oh, as far as I can tell, we're doing okay now. Earlier, not so much, but... Oh, we can do stuff here, too. Uh, what do we want to do with schools, research facilities, workers? Research facilities could be improved. Um, workers... I mean, like we said last time, Nason Industrial Base going up to here would be really good. But let's do research facility. Just, just let, let get the ball rolling. Get the ball rolling for that. Admin efficiency needs to definitely be increased. And let's go on in. If we possibly can. So I want you guys to go like right there. Oh, we have no manpower as well. That sucks. But we're still doing well against them. Oh, at first I thought that was us. I'm like, oh, Roshi. Oh, that's whatever. After them, they'll go down to here too. Loot. Yes, please. And then we'll do this one next. In the wake of the collapse of the Soviet Union, Siberia became what most would call anarchy. Opportunistic generals, idealistic democrats, and kings alike carved out their own states. Without regulation, the situation in Siberia slipped out of the hands of the, any one man or body, and most used this time as an opportunity to iron out any grudges. We have our own quarrels as well to the south lies of the People's Revolutionary Council, a warlord clique of former Soviets. It's no secret that the military Soviets have wronged us before, but now is the time to settle this difference for good. Yeah. Not a bad idea. Uh, what do, oh, I was going to click on something else here, I forget. Uh, kind of mean, Cruiser is not bad. Still doing okay. Still doing a okay for now. Not perfect. Not great. Ooh, that's not. That's a little high. But it'll be. Ooh, hello. Hey, another division. Yay. Did we win? Huh. <laughs> Akaban, huh? Achinsk. Actually, we go to Achinsk. It's fine. Ah, capture a boon to be sure. Nice. We won. We won moving quickly though. For the Lord knows we need to. Questions. Increase local cooperation. Locks more decisions. Revolutionary security administrations. Oh. So if we have the rats. Uh, do, are these mutually exclusive? We can increase local cooperation first, maybe. Oh, are they? Integrated proletarian politicians. Get more stability, lose war support. Authoritarian democracy. Trial of the Krasnoyarsk thingy, my bob. We get some political power, though. Role reversal. Integrate. Oh, we, we want to integrate them quickly too, so. Oh, look at that. We actually get more GDP growth, stability, admin, efficiency, society, society development will passively improve. The contradiction settled. Just as the USSR before us, we've arrived at some final conclusions as to how far the central government's power extends, and what rights are reserved for the people and communes. The contradictions inherent to our anarchist state have finally been solved, and with it a number of logistical and administrative issues that have previously plagued the general government. Whether the path has been chosen, it's important to remember that all, that all we've done, we've done in the service for the greater good and the Russian people. May history look back upon us kindly. Not bad. And immediately start doing that. That's fine with us. What makes a teacher teach? Oh, look at this. Ooh. Wrangling unruly Russian children from an already daunt was it already a daunting task. Wrangling unruly Russian children who have been taught their whole lives that the only one thing that truly mattered to them was their freedom and that independence was not impossible. Uh, still, Timofey persisted, or rather, Mr. Smirnov persisted. He still wasn't used to being that, a Mr. and Mr. The initial shock of being brought into staff had not yet worn off. It was still inexplicably odd to him that people looked up to him. Education was hard work. The young man found her spot in the bright room chair and stirred his teeth. Basically, he had retrieved his pen and began drafting his lesson plan for the next day. Mentally, he was back in the General Assembly. One amongst the rows of people tightly packed into the building. It smelled of rotting wood and sweat, but felt exhilarating. He'd been leaning forward in his seat, watching the fiery speaker just uh, gesticulating, gesticulating at the podium. His passion seeped out of him and dribbled to the floor, soaking in the floorboards and expanding outwards to the crowd. Soon the creature swallowed Timofey's shoes, his whole body soon to follow. The speaker roared in the name of education, overwhelming Timofey in his drive. Timofey would twitch in chair, sliver or shivers down his spine, bringing him back to the present. He looked around the simple break room, only a table, a pair of chairs, and some tea. You wonder what made the man who spoke at the assembly go into teaching? But Timofey had his assumptions. A teacher's a light, a guiding force for those in dark and in a land consumed by darkness. Lord knew they could still all use a little light. Freedom for our sons and daughters, education for all. Hey, at least, so interest that's not too bad. 
But right now, ooh, at, ooh, that, that's got, got that got quite a bit worse. Ooh, I don't want to increase it by too much because po actually point zero six is not bad at all. Point one eight compared to where we're at, uh, that might be a bit much. Here, we want just a little bit more. I don't mind a little bit more then, as long as we keep it under wraps. Actually, since we're done with this, we do motion pass. Great. All right, show motions. Um, where are we at for? This one, despotism, it's still going up a little bit. Uh, I want infrastructure. I would like to do all this stuff, really. State GDP would be really nice. Manpower would be really nice. Uh, I want the political power, though. We have to get more political power. Review the chain of command. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Kemerovo. Oh, that's not good. Well, let's at least do this one first. As a result of a rather unique military democracy hybrid government, officers in the army are actually elected by the people as opposed to appointed by some fascist high command. While these officer elections have served a democratized military, which has acted as a form of centralized government over the past few years, it has also opened the door to completely inept halfwits coming into positions of power. Despite this, the military reserves the right to remove such elected officers from positions of power, should they provide incapable of carrying out the duties assigned to them. We should begin testing the officers currently in power to make sure that each incompetent officers aren't running our brigades. For the common moron. How did Misha allow himself to get roped into this? Ironic that he would be visiting Moron, that he had to be he had to be if this was what his life was now. He didn't hate living under the Black Army, it certainly beat the regime of Andriv, but it was a bit extreme for his liking. The Social Democratic Party is much more up his alley, but yet whether he feared the repercussions or if deep down his heart saw the potential good for greatness, or potential for greatness, Misha agreed to travel to the newly liberated territory. Here. He commanded, this is the place. Uh, Mongolia was never an industrial powerhouse. Misha was familiar with the continent that once they claimed the entirety of Eurasia, but this was not the grandiose house of Genghis. This was a meeting hall, eight in uh, in the retirement home. Misha threw the door open, his entourage fo following closely behind. The scene before him brought a smile to the bitter old man. The hammer and sickle rose, the brilliant tapestry of the star tome, the Soyombo. The military may have been lacking, but the arts and crafts department surely got all the budget. A little under a hundred men and women crowded into the room, each wearing some more memorabilia of their respective party. Greetings, comrades. Misha faked a large grin and followed the script. The massive turnout here shows something that we are making real progress. Misha put all put his all into the act, but the unenthused crowds was having no part of it. Now I want you to take a deep breath. Misha stopped, letting out a sigh. Uh, listen, I'm going to cut the BS with you. The general simply wants me to give you this spiel about liberation and freedom, but that's all looks. The visibly confused occupants of the room raised their eyebrows. Was this some kind of joke? Misha could see things were going south. Listen, I uh, it's just that Misha took a deep breath. It's that I cannot explain how this will work with just a pre-made speech. Uh, and I could something you must enjoy for yourself. I've seen it firsthand. I lived in a state where people were shouted they passed out from exhaustion. I've seen tyranny firsthand and I was used to it. It hardly fazed me at the time now. I see an alternative. I see that true cooperation and it's, and it's beautiful. You can all bring that to your commune. You can bring cooperation. Many glances were shared between the different parties before they looked back at me, to Misha, giving their nod of approval. Not too bad for a reformed conscript. Alright, so... Uh, I wanted to go to war with these guys, but has not acted a war motion recently. Okay, so we can't go to war with them yet. So that's actually fine with us. Kim Robo, thank you for uh, employing yourself at our behalf. Behalf? Thank you. Prepare a raid. Oh! Oh, you can prepare a raid. Oh, okay. You know what? We can try that. See what we can do. Maybe beat up their guys just a little bit first. Final preparations. I mean, do we have to do that one? We get more attack for 50 days. We don't have to. I don't want to lose that political power, so. Because we only get point three three anyways, so. Base value is 1.25, which I think is a change in TNO. Was that is that a change or is that not? Because it doesn't it's not affected by uh, the focus tree anymore. So I could be wrong, but we'll see. Ender Volt. Those guys are not gonna be easy. That's a lot of manpower. Holy crap. We have more divisions, which is nice, but holy crap, Ola. You ever worry about this one? Or at least this one. Yeah, please go right ahead, just because they're gonna go to war with us anyway, so. Well, that's the last, last amount of political power we got now. All right, so initiate a raid. Yeah, let's go do that before that happens. Hope they just give us their money. That'd be nice. Well, that would be nice. I want to keep going with this stuff. Factory output is not bad. Resource extraction. Uh, anything else up here? Oh. Oh, it's because we own this one, too. Concession. Common request funding. The issue of funding is a common one in the General Assembly. The fair and equal distribution of funds is not an easy task, and it's not rare for at least a few individuals to be unsatisfied with their share. Normally, this could be blamed purely on flawed human nature, but we all know the commons to be beyond such p petty trifles. Therefore, the common that has approached us asking for due recognition of their needs in the form of economic assistance is only doing what they believe to be fair and necessary for the well-being of the people, or so they claim. Were we to demonstrate a goodwill and belief in the spirit of fairness, they'd be more inclined to support us in the present endeavors. It's not but bribery. 
spend just a little bit. Oh, that's fine with us. So there's still... Can we get another one? Oh, take control for ourselves. Oh, look at that. The power of the, yeah, is that one? The economy can be convinced. All the commons within the free territory are dedicated to the value of freedom, equality, and democracy, but naturally some divisions remain. Flank the pertinent issue for a commune, we've been courting it uh, is relatively minor. They are all but completely on board with us and would require only a bit of convincing to vote for the proposal action. Yeah. There if you tribute, so be it. Now they support us, that's good, because I want extra political power. So Crest North leans conservative and justice isolationists and pacifists, while Kansk, our hometown, is very strongly militarist. Authoritarian democracy, roles reverse. Trial the Krasnoyarsk government. I want to see what happens. Let's see what happens with that one. So with that in mind, we will need a political power to course of two. We could keep doing warlord development stuff. Oh, we have 13. That's not bad. Uh-oh. We don't have enough power now, do we? No, we don't. We're using 10 grid power. We need more grid power then. Hmm... Honestly, I kind of want external investments. Ah, we'll do that one first. And then maybe we'll go with reconnect Soviet power grids. Because that would be always a good thing to keep an eye on. Learning from experience is not bad. I like that a lot. Yeah, that's that one. The Siberian Black Army has it available. Oh, crap. They could, uh, going over this. Available to it some of the finest generals in all of Russia. From the Russian Civil War all the way to the recent Siberian War. Our generals have experience at all. We should endeavor to utilize the collective experience of these generals to create new officer training curriculum. Additionally, we should coordinate with more of our seasoned generals to create uniform military doctrine in which younger officers can be educated. Well, we were trying to beat him up. Can we just go in? These guys are already pretty beaten up pretty badly, so... Not just going in. Take him robo. I guess just take him robo. You guys, keep him in place. Oh, we overran division. Nice. You're literally here just to be sacrificial for... Why didn't you go here first, you ding-dongs? Hey, I got the basin. Yay! Where's the capital? Force it. A role reversal. Leonid held the door to the cafeteria shut with his body. A wave of angry men crashed up the, against his defenses. Grab my gun, he ordered, shouting at the cowering officer standing be uh, uh, behind him. Grab my effing gun, that also moved. F these idiots. Leonid strained to pull the gun from his holster. He managed to get his hand wrapped around the grip. As he felt his foot slipping like a flash, Leonid slipped around where once his back pressed against the door. He now uh, stood right in front of it. His pistol pointed into the mob of men just beyond the door. Wow, we lost 6,000. That sucks. Um, the city of Kasnoras had its criminals, but the definition had stretched so thin that at points it became increasingly difficult to house all those deemed worthy of jail by Andriv. Sheriff Leonid Drozdov had considered it a blessing to be inside the prison during the occupation of the Black Army. This was until the prisoners caught word that the anarchists were coming and that they would likely bring freedom with them. The iron is not lost upon him now. Him and his small detachment of guards have been trapped in the lobby. Anarchists outside and inside. He was trapped. The threat seemed to work, at least for now, as long as Leonid kept his firearm pointed down the hallway. Prisoners would not dare move. He wanted to breathe a sigh of relief, but knew the slightest movement could be perceived as weakness, and weakness could be capitalized on. Sir, a fearful whimper would get slithered out of the group. What? Leonid kept his fingers trained on the hallway before him, his finger hovering over the trigger. They're here. It required no explanation. Leonid could hear it from behind him. The Black Army had arrived at the prison and was now waiting outside the building, preparing for the possibility of a siege. Leonid's breathing became more rapid. What was there to do? Where would he go? His eyes darted back to the men behind him and back to the revolting prisoners. Leonid dropped his gun to the ground with a clink and raised his hands in the air. There's no use fighting against the winds of change. Nice. Over on the bed, see me in my office. Officer Igor Skornyak filled with his hat in his hands. He traced out the skull and crossbones woven into the fabric of his finger. This wasn't good. Igor lived nowhere near Kansk, but he found himself boarding the train to the city. After a very concise letter arrived at his doorstep, the seal of the Black Army stamped out onto the parchment. Igor gulped his look up to the clock four hours since he arrived. On purpose, he was sure. The old dude knew he had to tor two people. Uh, comrade Skor Skornyak, Comrade Mishrenko is ready to see you now. A young woman, her skirt a dark purple, smiled as she handed out his death sentence. Igor took a deep breath and hung his head. It wasn't over. It could be a promotion, it could be an accident. Igor stood up and straightened out his suit, placing the hat squarely on his head. Mishrenko did not make mistakes. I came as soon as I received your letter, Comrade Mishrenko. Igor fought the urge to wipe off his sweaty hands on his pants as he stood up at attention. 
I did notice your letter did not specify a reason for my arrival, comrade. Igor looked to the great general in his chair for support, but found none. Not that there would be any need to be one. I act on behalf of those I am honored to call my peers, such as yourself, comrade Mishrenko. Androni Mishrenko looked at him with no clear emotion. His eyes droopy and his mouth a straight line. What had happened to the Russians? When did they become so this pathetic? He wondered out loud. Igor felt the familiar symptoms of anxiety build. His hands began to act independently, grabbing at his suit just for this feeling of stability. Mishrenko rose from his seat. I have heard plenty about you, Igor. The circumstances were any different. I would pity you, however. We live in a world, do we not? Uh, Igor did not answer. I need the most brilliant men in the most crucial stations. War approaches us, and your officer role is better suited to someone else. Igor, against his best judgment, protested, but Comrade Mishrenko, sir, I'm a democratically elected officer, and I'm the man who will save Russia. Now get out. Trial of the King. Strange and familiar that. I don't want to get too much more despotism. Sorry. Not for this campaign. Next one. I promise, though. Specialized unit roles. Over time, become even clearer to black army military and high command. In order to defend the nations, our forces will need to further specialize so as to keep pace with the other militaries of Russia. These individualized roles will become even more independent or important as we transition into a truly modern military force, complete with armor division and aerial support. Consequently, we'll increase funding for specialized sections of the military. Such specialized roles include heavy ordnance, engineering reconnaissance, and, of course, infiltration. There we go. Now we can do this one. Um, we lose political power, don't we? Extra attack does not seem bad, though. We are anti-revolutionaries, it'd be nice, but... Oh, growing black army control. Oh, that's not, that's not good. Concessions, of course. Build new schools. Warlord event, we'll get there down. Oh, hello, we have 15, look at that. Oh, we have extra production units, too. Look at that, nice. So right now we're looking good on, um, guns, anti-tank, artillery. We need some planes. How are we building? We're building up... A admin office, it looks like. We're doing quite well, actually, on admin offices as well. Political game factor, plus 13%. Wow. That's pretty nice. If that's the case, um, keep building more. And then go there, too. Well, we only need one consumer good. That's pretty nice. Verona conference ends. Not bad. Trial of King Rurik. Oh, what else is up here? Invest in heavy construction techniques. Oh, yeah. Let's come back down here. Why not? Let's see. What what am I? Ooh, I definitely want to get to this one next, though. Rurik knelt before his decaying court, his artwork, culture he had only been recently began to foster, was being lifted off the walls. Men had begun chipping away at the throne, claiming pieces of it as prizes, evidence for their children would never have believed in the time kings had ruled Russia. The barrel of a gun he had made its home, in the fat folds of the back of his neck, keeping him still in the burning throne room. Five men and a woman had surrounded him. He recognized one, Siuda. He shouted something out to the others, the looters of his court, something Rurik did not wish to hear. His eyes betrayed his interest. He didn't need to hear what he said when he could see the his son being dragged over by his shoulders. Rurik looked up to Siuda, where is Lydia? The words must have startled him because Siuda turned towards the king on his knees in an instant. Where is my daughter? Desperation began to creep, of course, into his voice. Siuda offered a sad smile in return. Nikolai Karailov, on behalf of the members of the Security Council, I should apologize for the rushed nature of this trial. Men sat down on unconscious Prince Yuri next to the king of the burning court, regardless of the circumstance today. You stand accused of authoritarianism, the oppression of free gathering and unionization, and reactionary violence. You are welcome to present your defense at this time. <clears throat> Rurik and Nikolai Karailov, both men in the same body, looked around one last time and looked back at Siuda. Where is my daughter? The revolutionary gestured to uh, Yuri. Under the consideration of the opinion of the peoples of the city, your son is free to go. Well, that was well and good, but where's Lydia? Uh, Nikolai Krylov, this council with dissent, finds you guilty in all charges. You are to be placed in a detention center in a city to be determined. Sita found no joy in his words. Rurik felt the gun dislodge itself from his neck and hands appeared under his armpits, lifting him to a standing position. It was all then he could see her, a pool of blood and three combatants at her right feet. Rurik let out defeat, deafening screams that he was carried away. The revolution isn't always pretty. I kind of want to tax hike. Our national debt is 0.1 billion. Deficit, which means we can spend more, right? Absolutely. Spend more. Um, deficit is not bad. Honestly, tax. I want more growth. Screw that. Get more growth right now. There we go. Yeah. It's only 0.1. Is it worth it? Honestly, probably not too much, but whatever. I'm still taking it. Oh, motion to the power of the General Assembly. Yes, please. Yes, 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 yes. Motion passed. Great. And we got more social support now. Awesome. I love this. I love this whole mechanic here. Uh, we need more manpower, but... Uh, electric plant. Mm. Infrastructure would be nice. Manpower would be nice. Despotism would be super nice. Actually, let's look here. There's Conscrest Norris, Pacifists. 
who leans militarist, conservative, industrialist, cooperative. Honestly, this would be good for the future. Industrialist and cooperative, huh? Two to one? We should be able to win, right? They're, they're, uh, they're neutral, so we should be able to win, right? Constitution, commit for Egypt. Whoa, look at that. That's a pipe. Does Egypt have content? Oh, that'd be so cool. I want to play as Egypt. Are we have the Muslim Brotherhood? Eh, whatever. You should be able to go and do fine without me. So, Black Guard units. Among the finest warriors of the Russian Civil War were our Tachankas, brave soldiers who were charging into battle. Oh, look at that. Uh, I don't think I've seen that one before. Holy crap. Uh, into battle on horse-drawn wagons with machine guns, we should create a unit of similar strength and prowess. A newly created Black Guard will fill this role, accepting only the best the Black Army has to offer. This elite organization will institute testings of members of the armed forces to gauge who and who would not be eligible to join this new group. These heavily armored units will eventually be able to rapidly deploy around the country and set up defensive and or offensive positions wherever needed. We should do okay there. I don't get the plans. I've not seen Jamaica yet. At least in the time recording. Jamaica's nice and green. You're white. Huh. Ah. Okay. Oh, Puppet of America. Political violence. Miracle on the Hope River. That's a far end repression. Oh, you say repression. I get interested then. But gearing up. The tapsters. Or tapsters. Who are working at the little bar on the corner worked hard to bring life into the establishment. Bright lights and booze, paintings and piano, darts and dice. So there was no price too high to make the building seem less than a moldy sanctuary. And more like a place one could rely on to cater to their alcoholic needs. But these efforts were all in vain as it was in the conversation that gave the dingy bar life. Pavel reeled back in a fit of laughter, clasping his hands together in mock prayer. So imagine this. No, 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 picture this. The soldier slammed his hand down on the bar, trying to bring the rowdy band of men around him to silence. I actually drove through Krasnodarsk a few months ago. The people there all looked like this. Pavel leaped up from his stool and widened his stance, shoving his hands in his pockets and waddling around in a circle. Soon, the band of uh, soldiers around him threw their heads back in laughter. Soon they would be in Krasnodarsk, too, shooting the men they mimicked. As of now, it didn't matter where they would be. Although it hung in their minds at this moment of laughter, a brotherhood was fleeting. Although the unspoken inevitably not all of them would return to this location wafted through the room like a cloud of smoke, it didn't matter. For the moment in which they lived, they laughed, laughed as a two and a half meter tall man marched around in a circle drunk as one could be. Pavel plopped down back into a seat with a thud, gripping on for dead life onto the counter so as to not fall. He looked around to the twenty soldiers all around him, his twenty brothers, and decided that he was ready to die so that others could live, so others could be as free as twenty drunk Russians in a bar. Mother Anarchy's sons have no bell at the Kansk liquor house. I kind of want to do this one, or this one. Uh, I kind of keep doing this because if we have this, we should probably maximize it, right? Three and a half percent. Hmm. Do that one. It's really low. Fifteen is not bad. So how are we doing here? I should probably help him out. Can you actually pierce them? Oh, we're fighting in the mountains. That sucks, bro. But we're still winning. Not bad. Let's go here and go here if we can. If you can move fast, if you can encircle them and kill them off. Kaisel, we've lost. 300 people basically versus a thousand not bad good let them attack us yeah go go straight in there actually if you want to hold it's fine moron moron how do we pronounce it Ooh, scam loot too yeah that'd be good that'd be very good that's not good taking control for ourselves nice and Oh, that, that's some dude. Pretty normal. Krishna Minnon. Oh, okay, cool. Attack him right back. Counterattack. Now they have more divisions. That sucks. Let's come over to you. Should have enough guns to go and replace these guys. And enhance equipment channels. Our current system of coordinating military supply chains both to and from the factories that manufacture arms is not only inefficient, but also potentially a major hindrance to further growth and expansion, should such things become necessary. With this in mind, many bureaucrats working in the current system have proposed a number of reforms that could hopefully reduce the severity of the problems plaguing our supply chain. Such problems include high breakage rates, failure to track and control inventory, bottlenecks, and many more. Fundamentally, all these problems are caused by inadequate communication. By installing phone lines between every factory and supply depot, we'll be able to achieve a far greater level of communication than we've ever had before, hopefully improving our industrial situation. Not a bad idea. Hey, we cut them off. Good. Go in there and kill them off. And actually, if that's the case, actually, these guys can't get very much supply at all then. Which is also very good, too. There's a lot of divisions right here, though. They've lost one capital. Up to ten divisions. I mean, we're pretty close to a two. We could get in a circle here by ourselves, which would suck, but... Oh, well. 
anything else here? No. How's this looking? Um, look at that. That GDP ratio went way down. GDP goes straight up. I love it. Growth is only 3.5%, but whatever. More divisions will be very nice. Or I guess one more division. That's actually elite division. It's only 15 combo, but whatever. Still take it. Still take it. At least... Yeah, don't fight in the mountains, ding-dongs. Just go and separate yourselves for now. We lost too many guys in that fight. 2,000 is too much. So they need if they want to spread out. Oh, we almost got encircled there. Oh boy. Mobility revisited. Our armored divisions have been left very far behind technologically in the race of the arena at Russia. In order to rectify the situation, we've been reverse engineering captured German, Japanese, and American tanks left over from the Siberian War and other previous conflicts. The technological insights gained from these designs, as well as a large array of data based on the performance of the T-34 and T-44 tanks in previous wars, has allowed us to create an entirely new and original vehicle design. How much map do you have? 6,000? Jesus Christ. Oh, yes. Equipment. Iberia. Come on. Come on. Beat the other living crap out of them if you can. That'd be nice. They attack us, we attack them. Let them attack us. Let's attack them. Definitely give this guy a run for his money. Level 4 is not bad, though. Stepan, anything else? No, he's an organizer already, which is pretty good. Nice and handy. Screw channels. Don't feel like visited. Hop out right there. If anything. Let's get the guys on the front line first. That's more important. Hey, motion fast. Great. Alright, let's come back up here. Show methods. Um. Infrastructure will be pretty nice. I want a little more manpower, but it's not too bad. Keep going with this one. This one's not too bad to do as well. Two to one. Nice. Not bad. And Hitler's gone. Goodbye, Hitler. Good old Hitler's gone. Three is over there. Two. Honestly, probably we'll attack here, but we got to wait for these divisions to move around first. So, How much artillery do we have? We have three. Oh, that's not bad. That's a good amount of artillery. You guys already have it on you, though. What if we threw on artillery here? There you go. Oh, that's not good. Oh, that's not good. Oh, oh my gosh. That is, they are huge. Honestly, if that's the case, um, I'm going to probably do some funky stuff because I don't really care how we do here. I'll be honest. Yeah, just because... Yeah, I, I don't want to be bothered with this. I don't want to be bothered with this too much, but developments in technology and our design infrastructure have finally allowed us to make headway into a new M main battle tank design. This new tank will incorporate various new technologies, such as electric starters, two planning and gun stabilization, basic night vision equipment, ammo load at 45, and four stroke one chamber water cooled diesel engine. This design is still locked behind modern tanks in a variety of ways, and some of these new technologies in, in the design are less unreliable. Nonetheless, this tank represents a quantum leap forward in Russian armored technology and will lay the foundation of a modern armored military and coverage from above. With the efforts of several dozen scientists from across the communes, we've been able to scrape together the wrecks of several down German bombers, as well as a few indigenously designed fighters from our neighbors, which we've been reverse engineering with the help from the parts of these aircraft that are provided. We've developed a number of these new designs for aircraft that will put us on par with our neighbors, and allow us to forego propellers of the past and begin making headway into the jet engines of the future. Two men, two lives. Stepan Valentiev was a soldier in the Red Army. Before his comrade Valentiev, before Russia had been shattered to pieces by the Wehrmacht, before it all fell apart, Valentiev was a soldier in the Red Army. Alexander Vasilevsky was a soldier in the Red Army before he was a rebel in Mongolia. After Russia had been shattered to pieces by the Wehrmacht, after it fell apart, Alexander Val Vasilevsky was a soldier in the Red Army. Valentine thought of his past and the past of the man beside him as they walked down the hallway. He wasn't sure what to say or even if he should say anything at all. The click of their boots occupied the silence. Vasilevsky was his prisoner, a captured combatant, and nothing more. At least that's what the records would say. Valentine was caught off guard when the letter from Vasilevsky found himself on the desk. He was further taken aback when he saw inside demands. Uh, he was sure he had lost it when he had accepted them. Mercifully, Vasilevsky broke down the silence. Or broke the silence. Thank you, comrade Valentine. Stepan did not respond, not out of arrogance or frustration or anything out of that matter. He did not respond because he couldn't. They just kept walking until the doors were behind him. A truck was waiting for them outside, its bed covered with a top so as to not have the contents fall out beside it. Or behind it. Vasilevsky made his way suddenly around the vehicle. Inspecting it for any faults, Valentine spoke suddenly, What will you do? The question caught him off guard. Vasilevsky froze in his place. What will you do once you get there? Val uh, Valentine repeated. When I get back into the city, I think I will rest. I will rest and I hope I will see the day. You march into the city yourself and drive the Germans from this country for good. Best of luck, newcomer. Now, I went to war with them, obviously, and we took them out, but... 
I just reloaded the save, and then actually Tomsk went to war with those guys as well, instead of us, which actually was really beneficial, so no funny business here. Even though I did tap over to see the PRC, and apparently the AI is allowed to get like 11,000% debt to GDP ratio, and they like 0 0.02 billion in GDP, so the AI, they couldn't make anything, which makes sense, and makes it more fair, but it was a little uh, weird to see, but regardless. There you go. Oh. Operation Penza. Oh, I wonder who's killing each other. My good lord, this is a mess. This is a huge mess. Oh, Gorbachev, hello. Kaminsky, of course. Medvedev. Ah, uh, Kaminsky. Cool. But Russia's killing itself, which is absolutely normal. Also, right now, we're trying to get more uh, discipline here. Black Army discipline, which I think would be very, 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 very beneficial for us. Oh, there's, uh, there's two divisions here. I thought there was just one. Okay. You know what? All I care about is just keeping them in place. Oh, we lost a base. That sucks. You find them and kill them. That's what you gotta do. Just find and kill. And my gosh, you move so slow. Uh, if you're gonna be all the way over here, you might as well do something, right? There goes Zoln's Brigade. Brigade Brigand. Brigade Reno. This guy's definitely gonna get encircled here. Oh, I got the basin back, nice. Yeah, just go right there, that's fine. Dissolution of the West Indies Federation. Oh! Hello. Perhaps it was for this. Oh, now the game's going like super hard because they're releasing a lot of people. Oh, now they're attacking us too, huh? Cool. Get us. Oh, we got quite a bit of army XP, do we not? Nice, there you go, good. Keep it up. Uh, you go there. Cool. And the Blade Hone. Following the Siberian War, our army had lain in tatters. Strained by years of brutal Siberian warfare with little to no supply and practically no industry, many had expected our small anarchist experiment to be considered to the, to the dustbin of history. They were wrong. Years later, our army stand recovered and rejuvenated, with a strong industry and willing population behind them. We have honed the blade and tempered it with fire. It now falls upon the Black Army to strike. The only defense to their attack is the attack to their peace. Is the attack to peace. Nice. Very nice. Motion pass. Great. Let's get some more motions. Yes. More political power, please. Two to three. Oh, you don't want... These guys don't like it very much. Two to one. Ah, democracy. Okay, how are you not there yet, bro? Bro, seriously. How are you not there yet? That's a bit ridiculous. There you go. Now you cut him off. And we did take Thompson's coup. Nova would be very nice. Oh, let's go there then. Alright, the Croatian Winter, they'll be judged by history. Oh, we all will be in in the end. It's alright, we all get judged in the end. None of us make it out alive. Did you actually lose? Oh, you won, okay. I'm like, my goodness, that sucks, bro. Uh, I'm not sure that I really want to do this one. I don't want to get more despotism. Uh, but we are getting more of this anyways. Oh, I'll do it anyways. Screw it, why not? It's not going to be a pure uh, socialist run, but whatever. It's alright. Not bad. Are we winning there? So losing there? We're winning down here. Cash is 4,000 and 22,000. Not bad, not bad. Not bad at all. 75% poverty rate? Not bad either. I love, if you just look at the GDP, just, it just almost is completely vertical at one point. It's so nice. Look at that. It's, oh, well, maybe not quite vertical, but 3.5 billion is not bad compared to where we were at. Not a lot of growth, but debt of GDP is not bad too. 0 0.015, half a trillion, actually half a billion, not even half a trillion, no more than half a billion in debt. Inflation's looking pretty good. Oh, a diffused Algerian crystal. Man, are these guys doing force defense or something here? My goodness. They do have uh, better intel, but whatever. The blade honed. Nice. Oh my gosh, how many more tiles do we need? Bro, I mean, if we capture Nova Sibirsk, that should be it. As long as we get Nova Sibirsk, that should really be it, right? The canal riots, pretty normal, pretty normal. Bro, okay, I'm, t I'm sick of this. Go in. Just kill them off. Come on. Either you or them will win or die. I'm, I'm sick of this. I'm really sick of this part. 
That's so stupid. What stranger in a familiar land? Where am I? I am in my house, in my city, but I look out the window and I see a completely foreign land. Jan scribbled the words onto his diary. He held the book close to his chest as he hid behind the drapes of his living room. He was born in Krasnorsk, only shortly before the fall of the Union. He saw the city trade hands a few times before it always felt fake, like something or someone would rip, read would read about in a book. It felt so real now, it felt dangerous. Jan stepped out of the streets. He could still hear the engines of the cars deeper inside the city. It still meant he had time. He added another entry to his diary, the only possession he brought with him. As he walked, I'm going to flee today, I've decided. The anarchists have reached the defenses of the city and are beginning their assault in the city as I write. If this is to be my last entry, let it be known that I was a man of authority and I died that way as... The sound of artillery fire in the distance had shook the earth, sending the pen rolling away from him. It was happening. The anarchist was here. Yes, Jan began to sprint towards the train station, abandoning his pen in the city he'd, of course, never see again. He ran and ran and ran, his legs numb. He was near the station, a mere block more to go. He ran at a corner and promptly fell to his booty. Suddenly there were four men, burly in stature, and with skulls tattooed under their arms. Jan screamed, scrambling backwards on the ground. The men looked at the pile of men on the ground with confusion. Are you seeing this, comrade Dmitrievich? One of the men nodded. I told you, they all walk around so funny. The soldiers laughed. Some inside joke Jan did not understand, for not that he wished to, too, as well. The soldier extended a hand to the man on the ground. Are you native to the city? We're looking for the city hall. Jan hugged the diary close to his heart in his chest, his eyes wide, darting between the confused soldiers. You're not going to kill me? The men laughed. Oh, we lost manpower. Huh. Not good. Not good. Oh, Arab People's... Arab People's Republic. Whoa. Is it Habash? Welcome. That's gotta be the last one, right? Hey, we got that. Aircraft Flight is nice. Please tell me that's the last one. It makes literally no sense for them not to capitulate after he took Kemerovo. Oh, actually, we already I think we started with Kemerovo. Uh, no, we had Kemerovo. Novosibirsk, Tomsk, as well as the capital up here, Lesosibirsk, and that is that tile too. Getting this one is extreme. That's a bit extreme. If you capture all three, that's all you should need. That's literally all you should really need. This is a bit too much, in my opinion. But who am I? I am just, I am just here. Screw it. They want to live. Kill them. Oh, they take Manila. So some gains some ground in Asia. Nice. So, devs, how much more do we need to go to capitulate these guys? That's a good question to ask. They have divisions? Kill them. What is our rule when they don't like people? Give them a good time. That's our rule. Yeah, this is a bit ridiculous. Come on. Oh god. Not the Winter Olympics. Please don't tell me that it's gonna just fire and fire and fire and fire again and again and again and again and again. Seriously, bro? I mean, this is stupid. That's so much we need! That doesn't make any sense, man. It doesn't make a single lick of sense. With, take this, with us taking this much territory? Hmm. Basically, you have to own every tile, it seems like. Because you have all the three major cities already. And it's still not enough. It's still not enough. Holy crap! Are you kidding me? No, 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 no. That's dumb. That's... That's really stupid. I cannot agree with that one there. Uh... Martial tribunals. A lot more despotism. Hmm. Rely on the people's justice. Daily social support. You lose daily social support for a year. Pacifying the free territories. Slightly increased scoring times. Parting like it's... Oh, unlocks a new focus tree. Oh, that's interesting. So you just don't unlock it. Okay, so now this is interesting. I, this, I like this change, though. Even though I don't like the, the way they distributed the victory points. I completely disagree with that. But... Uh, I get both. The war support goes down for 90 days. Promote pe progressive peasantry. Try the Siloviki. Increase their GDP. But their democracy goes down, too. Ooh, a city under siege. I like that one. Not bad. But well, rely on the people's justice. So does that mean we have to wait here for it here? Form the free Siberian territories. No, we don't. We are in control of all important cities in central Siberia from here. We will create a new Russian free from the Russia free from states of oppression and exploitation. One true democracy's vision, long live the anarchist revolution. Oh, we can do anything else with the loot though. No. I wish we could convert that to money or something. Well we'll see what happens. We still need core more stuff though, which kinda sucks, but whatever. Um, oh my goodness, we still have all this stuff. I don't know if we had this stuff or not. Uh, land reform. Working conditions. 
Yeah, poverty relief. It does increase your uh, GDP, but it does increase your inflation as well. But that's still good to do, no matter what. Hmm. Power grid. Oh, yeah, weekly stability. That's pretty good, too. Exploit uranium deposits. Oh, that's kind of nice. Um, construction, empower workers, organizations. Not bad. All right, so with the third research slot, let's go. It's only 1964, so we actually did this pretty early on. Land auction is pretty good to get. Um, tanks, weaponry. What do we want? Planes. Probably start doing some plane stuff. Aircraft cost modifier. Our Air Force cost will increase by 300%. Where are economic policy? Oh boy. Justice for all. There are many ways to achieve justice. Alexandra plotted her options from the very moment the man with a dark, blotchy beard who grabbed her wrist as she left the bar. While he dragged her deeper into the alley, Alexander pictured his head split open and his heartbeat visible in the pulsations of his brain. While she knelt before him, looking up to him undoing his belt, she pictured being in the same position, watching his limp body swing from the gallows as she laid in the dumpster, discarded like a trash after he she counted the ways to get justice. The following morning, Alexandra made up her mind. Murder would not bring her justice. Attempting to ignore the incident as her mother had done before her would not bring her justice. Alexandra refused to carry the baggage dropped on her by a stranger. A scoundrel who believed he was above the men around him, that he could decide the fate of others. He was the kind of man that would feel victorious if she allowed her rage to overcome her. If he could deprive her of the same humanity he lacked, he would not win. The village had come to recall, not all of them, of course. Many still within the city viewed the woman, even the liberated one. As one who existed to be housewives, to be bearer of children, those who stormed the house of the man who forced himself upon her, were the true revolutionaries, she decided. Those who dragged him out kicking and screaming as she was a night prior were the men and women who would bring change to Russia. The people of the village who stood as a tribunal around a man, a fascist wanderer from the Eastern realm, and sentenced him to death, had prevented the man from winning. Alexander did not concede a rage, she had found justice and compassion of the people, an eye for an eye. Ooh, there's more manpower. We got plenty of manpower, though. We actually have a deficit. Wait. Wait, what? Is that it's green deficit though? Motion pass, great. Oral agreement's gone. Nine point nine percent, not bad. Six point two percent, not bad. Um, I want more growth, bro. More growth, not enough. Honestly, as much as I want to do this, one, let's go and do with uh, and install so, poverty relief first, and then we're gonna go and just educate these guys. Oh, and we did that one too. Awesome. Now we have a lot more things here. Strongly pacifist. Leans industrialist, huh? We have enough energy for now. Thermal electric plant, state GDP, infrastructure. So much more political power. We're going to wait for that one. Let's go with infrastructure. Industrialist and cooperative. We have quite a few people that, that prefer um, isolationist. So maybe not that one. Oh, cooperative? Yeah. No, we, we have, yeah. Supports and cooperative opposes isolationists. Cooperative isolationists. Let's find the research. Uh, how many industrialists do we have? Leans industrialists. Leans agrarian. Agrarian and leans industrialist. Well. Roads are nice. Oh crap, that's not good. So you're gonna minus two. Minus one. Let's see what we uh, request weapons? Yeah, that's fine. If you wanna read this, please go ahead. That's fine. And this one too as well. Let's talk. Three to four. We need at least one more on our side. They're all minus one ish. It is minus two. Let's come up to the top. Request reinforcements. If you wanna buy that, please go ahead. It's fine. So four to three, we should be able to win and get what we need to get done there. It's costly, but necessary. So with this focus tree, because we took this option up here, it looks like it's going to take a while to do, but the revival of Norilsk. With the age of warlordism slowly coming to a close in central Siberia, with the resources of the region firmly under our control, it's time for us to remove north to reconnect the resource-rich areas of Norilsk to the rest of our nascent state, firmly infamous for its expansive use of forced labor during the days of the Soviet Union. Since its collapse, the region slowly fell into disrepair, finally being lost to us from the West Siberian War, led to the collapse of the Soviet Rome state formed after the Second World War. Now we have a chance to reclaim these territories for our people, bringing his bountiful riches back into Russian lands. Let's not repeat the mistakes of our past. Oh. What's up here? Oh, we get a core on it. Oh, that's. Well, we should get a core. Oh, what is this? Oh, we can, like, tell them not to deliver energy. Oh. I never knew that. It's kind of nice. Reconnect the roads. 
and we are 43, which is good. Oh, what is this? The remote areas in the north of central Sa of central Siberia were left to rot in the anarchy that followed the collapse of the re region's central authority and the descent into warlords and fallen Siberian wars. Without any functioning body with the resources to maintain the old Soviet facilities, the riches of the Norilsk region have been laying dormant for a decade beyond the reach of any of the Russian warlords that lay claim to the lands. Now that some of the manner of stability has returned to the region, the new government has set out to reclaim the region and restore it to its former economic potential. If successful, the riches of the Norilsk will go a great way towards efforts to reunite and rebuild Russia. The areas surrounding the region's mineral deposits are in tatters. A decade of neglect has left the roads in complete disrepair, and most of the facilities they used to lead to are derelict at best and utterly dilapidated worse. Before we can bring a machinery to properly restore these, we may plan to send out a force of military engineers to restore the main roads links to working conditions. Nice. Yeah, so we do a lot of this stuff too. Well being for all. The halls of the General Assembly have been packed as they always were, like most days. There was a steady flow of people from all walks of life coming to vote their uh, the grievances or to put forth motions. Unlike most days, these people had uh, included many from the militant Kostinsky Union, demanding an immediate meeting with the Security Council. Uh, <clears throat> the Security Council, of course, agreed. The foreman, Vitaly Kostin, began with a carefully rehearsed speech. We, on behalf of the workers of Central Siberia, demand that our Siberian plan's militarization be reversed immediately now that our region is at peace with the uh, free territory, which is not under threat. Quotas should be increased immediately in production, diverted away from the military. I'm sure you see no problem with this. Siudo was the first to speak, of course, not Comrade Kostin. The people of Siberia deserve prosperity, especially after all they've endured, and I'm sure everyone here agrees. There was a quiet murmur of agreement from within the room, yet Ivan Stepanov spoke over it. Comrade Kostin, I understand your concerns. It began, it would be unconscionable for the free territory to continue this while, you, as you say, not under threat. Kostin was satisfied with this. The Security Council seemed to be far more receptive to the plight of the workers than the previous businesses and the governments he had dealt with. Unfortunately, Stepanov continued, that is not the situation we find ourselves in. To the east and west, bloodthirsty warlords turn their eyes on our land. To the south, as imperialists in Japan do the very same. Even within central Siberia, the defeated state has licked their wounds and prepared to strike. Comrade Kostin, the free territory must make sacrifices or we'll lose everything we fought for. This drove a divide in the Security Council. Though the Black Army had always fought for the people, Russia was a harsh place and these values may prove meaningless if they are not defeated at the hands of a desperate warmonger. But as, as with all motions, a decision had to be taken care of and made when it came to vote. Approves the Comrade Kostin's motion? Severely decreases the effects of the Siberian plan. Security Council rejects the motion. Well, that sucks. But a city under siege. The city of Tomsk shook underneath the weight of Siuda and his comrades. Stepanov, Mishrenko, Valentiev, the composer, knew them all quite well. He almost had a strange fascination with them. As reporters followed the Black Army during its expansion, he was sure to read them as soon as the articles were published. They were different in real life, smaller from his perspective atop the broadcast center from here. He could see the march. He watched the streams of people flow out of the factories and join the raging rapids that was the march towards the city square. My money was on the king, the poet jeered. The anarchists were the last ones I expected, in all honesty. Maybe that should have made them the most likely. Shut up, uh, said one of them. Hold on, my bad. Okay, game, stop lagging so much. Oh my god, you know, please, 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 please. Uh, <clears throat> uh, uh, the scientist says, shut up, the scientist says, the woman. Yevgenia, the composer, interjected. I don't care what her name is, we're speaking over the radio. She claims to be committed to the cause of education, and I'm inclined to believe her. The composer returned to watching from the window. The conversation had caused him to lose track of the leaders of the movement. Now all he could see was one in a huddled mass of people, marching and waving banners of the anarchist movement. The door to the room was swung open. All three men turning around in surprise. The young boy was there, his face a painting of panic. Kamov is on the roof of the helicopter. We have to go now. Lekachikov... Uh, it's attempting to organize a counter-protest and may distract them from marching towards this building. None of the men move. Come on, we have to go. The composer looked to the poet and the scientist. Without a word, he understood their plans. Shostakovich extended a hand to the poet. Best of luck to you both. Our experiment has failed and a new one begins. The composer limped away. Yeah, sometimes this, this mod lags super hard sometimes. It, it, it can be occasionally annoying, but overall, still not too bad. Still not too bad. As I said that, I said that and it just gets... Just leaving lag here. <laughs> I wouldn't be too you know if there wasn't any lag, but parting like it's 1914. Peter Siud, the hoisted his glass high into the air, the alcohol spilling out over his sides. He felt light, like he was riding on a cloud. Pieter had promised himself as a boy that he would never fall into the temptation of alcoholism that had taken his father from him. This felt like an exception, though. He would surely regret it in the morning and would be quick to scold Yevgenia for allowing him to take partake in Stepanov's seemingly never ending supply of booze acquired through means unknown to Pieter. For now, that didn't matter. Pieter's glass still high in the air, spoken slur speech, comrades. The usual suspects turned to him, Yevgenia, Stepanov, Valentiv, even Mishrenko would come to join him. I think, I think, Peter trailed off, his eyes seemingly fixated on something in the distance. Do you, Badger, to Stepanov? It doesn't really seem like it at this moment. Yevgenia playfully slapped Stepanov's arm. Oh, be nice, it's his first time. Let the boys celebrate a little now, we've accomplished a great victory. 
Valentine raised his glass. Uh, as a toast, no doubt about that. He gulped down the bitter contents of his glass. We have all done something incredible here. There's no turning back now, Mr. Enkel interjected, his drink untouched. We'll either retire in Moscow as heroes or die here as a mere stepping stone to the next regime, a, fo a footnote in the history of Russia. The trio looked at the old general with, uh, with unamusement. Let's not think about that far ahead, Taratuta said, tracing her finger around the outline of her glass. Today we've won and nothing else matters. Cheers. Sidos, elected president of France. Oh, hello, Sidos. Oh, we're not bad. I hope we get some credit rating here, though. I hope we're not junk. Oh, it's default. Well, that kind of sucks. Well, that's not bad. We're boosting everything up as much as we possibly can right now, so. Yeah, it's still 64, which is not bad. Uh, let's wait to do the rest of this stuff like I normally do. Let's keep working on artillery or something like that. Oh! Yay, focuses! Oh, look at also. Into a brighter tomorrow. Despite our struggles, the Siberian Black Army has managed to beat all of our enemies and unite Central Siberia. However, our work does not stop here, as there is much to be done. Firstly, and most importantly, many new villages, towns, and even cities have come under our control, and we must work to help organize all of our new lands into the proper communes. Furthermore, we must begin the long process of helping the people acclimate and understand why anarchism is the proper future of Russia. Lurking and mostly unspoken is a fear that the Siberian Soviet will be subsumed by the Black Army, leading to the anarchist dream falling into the trappings of a military junta. While some of these fears may have merit, we can hopefully find a solution that allows for us to maintain freedom while preventing chaos. Extended communications. Ooh, we get more debt. Consolidate the regional courts. Yes. The new territories under control have to be consolidated and reformed into proper anarchist uh, communes. The solution at first glance is simply to let the people organize themselves into communes. However, while this may seem simply easy on paper, the actual process over this reformation has caused quite the ideological debate. The peoples of Central Siberia have never lived under an anarchist society and likely have no idea how to organize themselves. Furthermore, it's also likely that there are too many who still wish to see our dream foiled. Therefore, we are left with a choice. Do we allow the people to self-organize as our ideology tells us to do, do so? Or do we have the black army provisionally lead these lands until they are ready to be properly organized? Wow, that's going down quite a bit. Oh, Brazil's 100 days. Good luck, Brazil. Good luck. That dead interest is super nice. A coup in Paraguay. Paraguay. No real change then, huh? Nice. Not bad. Oh, another division too. Another two divisions, yes. Whoa. The, the Philippines are just a massive powder keg. Wow. Yeah, Tino is definitely laggy with the toolbox area update. 100%, 100% confirmed. As I can tell you. That's more laggy, but you know what? American firepower is not bad. That's pretty good. Any focus street? Darn it, they don't. Uh, this part of the Philippines is us, or the America. Uh, cool. Well supplied army. That's a, uh, wow. More attack and defense and better supplies cons consumption. Wowzers. And Orthodox here. Bombardment the IJAAF. Oh boy. Oh. Oh, and of course, Africa Shield, Brazil. It exists. Sometimes. Hey, at least, I guess we are the first unifiers here. We're having Norsk. We still need Cormor lands too, so it's gonna take a while. Look at all this stuff. Oh, I wish we didn't spend all the PP earlier, but whatever. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot of PP. Did we get any planes actually? No, we didn't. That oh, sucks. Um, economy. 4.2% is not bad. Into a brighter tomorrow. Alright. Oh, we have some PP down. Okay, let's go in court. Just, just keep pouring it. We need a core stuff, so. Anything else? Motion for infrastructure. Faith and newly integrated. Oh, someone's become more co cooperative. That'd be nice, but. Faith in the newly integrated. To let the Black Army control our new lands would be nothing but an absolute betrayal of our ideology. It may seem in name, but allowing the Black Army to control our new lands sets a bad precedent. After all, if we expand farther, why shouldn't the Black Army control these new lands until the people are acclimated to anarchism? In any case, showing that we don't trust people under undermines anarchism here in Siberia as a whole. After all. One of the major tenets of anarchism is mutual cooperation, and failing to extend a hand in trust is nothing but sabotage your hopes from the very beginning. There may be also those who are unwilling to self-organize, but through proper execution of anarchist ideology as compared to throwing the army around like a fascist state, we can forge an anarchist society that's truly free. A shame. What do they mean? What? Oh, two-thirds. Okay, that makes more sense. We need two-thirds. Okay, that's my fault. That's completely my fault then. Oh, okay, so I'll probably fix that off-screen. Um, I think it's probably a good time to actually end the episode here. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below below tell me what you think about anarchism and i'll see you tomorrow after we f we did not fail and we will have succeeded that motion and continue pushing onwards and making really uh, central siberian central uh, siberian free territory 
the best part of Russia. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.